Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. We're up for a nifty Sunday morning ride on the Hot Rod Zenfield or Royal Enfield Classic 350. Just love that bike. I just put a brand new back tire on it. I think it's a Metzler. Let's see what we can read upside down. Road Tech 01. Now some of you are gonna say, hey, wait a minute. I thought you put a seat on it. Well, I did. And we got the seat on it, got it installed. Uh, I don't even know if I drove it a foot with that tire on. We found the Metzler in the back and uh, decided to change it. So I took the whole bike apart and put that tire on. I put about 70 miles on this thing yesterday and uh, I don't know, about 20 or 30 this morning already. So, and today my plan is we're gonna go to the Dinky Diner, the Dinky Diner in uh, Decatur, Iowa. Look that up. It's supposed to have three booths, you know? <laughs> I think I've been there before like uh, 15 years ago or so, but uh, we're, we're gonna see what it's all about. Anyway, the hot rod bike, you know, it's a hot rod 350, hot rod, hot rod, hot rod, right? Anyway, air-cooled, single cylinder, Single overhead cam, two valve, puts about 20 horsepower out, 20 foot-pounds of torque, that's about 27 newton meters, five-speed transmission. Uh, I've got about 8,700 miles on this bike already. That's why we had to change the tire. So I got 8,700 miles on the original Seat tire on that bike. This is uh, the bike I keep by my garage door, the very back, or you know, right up by the garage door. And it's the bike I ride them. You know, when I, when I gotta go to the grocery store, I've got the big bags on it. Uh, if I just want to tool around town, if I want to run some errands, if I want to ride an aimless ride, kind of like today, I'm going to try to put about uh, probably 300 miles, two or 300 miles on it, we'll find out. It's just a nice, comfortable, easy two-lane blacktop road or in-town bike. It does that kind of stuff really, really well. And that's the kind of riding I feel like doing today. So it's a, you know, look at this. It's a nice sunny day. Those windmills are just barely a spinning over yonder. Blue sky, clouds, you know. <laughs> Gorgeous Iowa, gorgeous Iowa. So we're gonna take advantage of it on my Zenfield. I call it the Zenfield because it is so relaxing to ride. The uh, big single cylinder engine, you know, the thump and thump and thump and low RPM motor kind of matches the heartbeat. Now I stole that, that's not my uh, original uh, thing, but uh, it really does apply. It, it's just such a good bike, you know. It's a very, you feel happy when you ride this thing. And I, I just love it, I just love it. Uh, something I wanted to talk about, I, I uh, about a new jacket again. <laughs> I want to talk about gear. So I was in an accident a couple years ago and a couple years ago my idea of gear was hey if it's cold I need a jacket and gloves, um, helmet. The only reason I'd wear a helmet is if it was really sunny out and hot and I needed sun protection or maybe eye protection for a long ride and uh, back then I think I owned one or two helmets. Had a helmet on from it was a $38 helmet when I had my accident. I had a, a pair of gloves on. Other than that I just had a sweatshirt on and a pair of blue jeans. Um, I broke all the bones on this side of my body, had road rash from right here all the way down to the end of my back and uh, you know I got done with that accident and what I learned was my helmet saved my life. My little crappy $38 helmet saved my life and so I'm a big believer in helmet. I got out of the uh, hospital, the first thing I did was order myself a brand new helmet. It wasn't that one, what I ordered was a HJC I-90 which is a very good helmet. I actually wore that one out and got bought myself a second one. And <laughs> but just recently, I bought myself this. This is a Shoei Neotech 2 helmet. It's a modular. That means the face opens up. I got this at Baxter Cycle, and uh, it's got a sunscreen. You push this lever up, and there's a little sunglass thing that comes down. It's got infinite adjustability and maximum comfort, and that's really important. Comfort. So uh, I got myself a good helmet. I uh, always wear gloves now. When I got home from my accident, I, I got my, uh, I hobbled out to the garage after, you know, I was able to. I was in the hospital for 10 days. But uh, anyway, uh, found my gloves and they were just shredded. The palms were shredded and the sides were shredded. So that was another thing I bought was new gloves. And I've got several pairs now. The pair I'm wearing today are my ventilated gloves. These are Noru gloves, they're armored. So hopefully if I'm in an accident, they will, they've got palm protection and side protection. and they will uh, save me. They're also very comfortable. There's that word again, comfort. The jacket I'm wearing, that was another thing I wanted. Before the accident, I believe jackets were uh, just there to, you know, for uh, keep me warm when I'm cold. Uh, I still believe that, but I, I want armor now. <laughs> I want armor. And uh, so I went to uh, Baxter Cycle and I bought myself a Cardung La, Royal Enfield Cardung La jacket. It was winter. It was getting, you know, it was fall, whatever. I don't know what time of year it was, but it was, it was cool. So I got this nifty jacket. It was real expensive and it works 40 degrees and up. You know, that's, that's, uh, I'll wear that jacket. It's, 
it's got uh, shoulder armor, it's got uh, elbow armor, it's got, you know, Cordura fabric, all that neat stuff. Uh, warmed up, I bought myself a Neo Nervic, Royal Enfield Nervic jacket. And that was great till about 85 degrees. By 80, by the time 80 hit, you were warm. By 85, you were hot. So I bought myself this Explorer. This is a ventilated jacket. It's a Royal Enfield Explorer jacket. Again, it's got the armor. This one has armor in the elbows, in the shoulders. I don't know. Yeah, it does have armor in the back. I think it does. So does my Nervic. My Nervic jacket has armor in the back. My card on has a piece of foam, but no armor. But uh, so it's a very comfortable jacket. It's got a rain a little pouch in the back where I have a rain jacket that I can put underneath it and it also has a liner. I don't have the liner in today from one of the bags but if I get cold I can put that in. Uh, if it rains I can put the uh, rain jacket inside the jacket. I did get caught in rain with this jacket on. I did not put the liner in and I did not get wet. I had the uh, I did not put the rain liner in. I had the uh, cold weather liner in and uh, it was a light rain. I think it was about 20 or 30 miles and it worked really well. So comfort. I keep saying comfort. All your gear, when you buy motorcycle gear, spend the money and get comfortable gear. Because <laughs> you should have gear that when you hop, when you want to go motorcycle riding, you look for that gear because you want to put it on. Because if it's comfortable and it improves the ride, that's key there. It should make the ride better. If you ride without it, the ride isn't as good. If you ride with it, the ride is better because then you'll always wear it. And then that means you get the benefit of the protection. I want to go on about this helmet real quick. This is a very expensive helmet. It's the most expensive one I've ever owned. To me, it's a very expensive helmet. Um, before this helmet, I would have I would have thought, you know, a waste of money. I went on a long trip, and uh, the helmet I had was an HAC, and it had some hot spots, and I, I thought, I'm going to spend some money. So I got this thing. This has actually been a life-changing helmet for me, and I really mean that. I don't know how to express that. I, I guess what I'm saying is, this helmet, for the money I paid for it, has given me so much more benefit and has improved my quality of motorcycle riding so much that it, it's just made motorcycle riding better, you know? Showy Neotech 2 right there. And uh, how does it do that? Well, one, it's very comfortable. It cuts out a lot of the noise. It doesn't give me, uh, you know, it doesn't have any hot spots in it. It's uh, got a very uh, good sunscreen. It's got a very adjustable shield. It's got excellent ventilation. You know, down here is the uh, jaw ventilation, and then up here, this is a, you, this is a two-part system: close, medium, and then open. You can you can do that with gloves on, and then it's got this thing where you can just barely open it, and it'll just barely let air in. But uh, so I I ride uh, you know sometimes 12, 14 hours a day, and with my helmets before, by the time I got to the gas station, I was just I'd whip that helmet off right away. With this helmet, I have to remind myself to take it off <laughs> because it's so comfortable. It just doesn't give me any nuisance, you know? So uh, I guess I'm saying spend the money on a helmet, spend the good money on gloves, spend the good money on a jacket. And you know what? I am a rambling man again today, aren't I? You know what? We're going to go find Dinky Diner. How's that sound? <laughs> Get out there and ride. Wahoo! We have made our way to Decatur, Iowa. Check it out. Not much of a town, a little tiny spot on the map. I bet it's good living though, huh? And there, my friends, is the Dinky Diner. Now, it's it's a viable business. It's still running, but it's not open today. So, uh, internet said it was. I got here. There is a sign, not on the outside door, but on the inside door, that said this Sunday it will be closed. So, <coughs> you can kind of see in there. They do have more than three uh, booths. I thought the internet said it had three booths, but one, two, three, four, five, six booths. So maybe they added on. But check it out. The fans are running in there. And, and uh, you know, soup, cinnamon rolls, the specials on the wall there. Oh, what a deal. What a deal. You know, so let's good step back and take a look at it. There's a sign right there. Dinky Diner. wonder how old it is. Well, you know what? We'll have to come back, won't we? Kind of a nifty place. We will uh, definitely have to check this out again. So the old hot rod is just running great, of course. What would it, you know, it always does, right? It's just, uh, well, it's a Royal Enfield. It always does. <laughs> uh, gear's working well. You know, this jacket is just perfect for this. It's kind of a passive jacket. There aren't a lot of bending things on it. You know, there's sleeves. You control the sleeves and the neckline. That's about it. Otherwise, or, or you can put the liners in. There's liners you can put in. Otherwise, it's pretty uh, passive. But uh, So one thing gear does, we talked about gear earlier, is it creates a weather system for you when you're on the motorcycle. And it's kind of like the, uh, 
temperature controls in your car. You know, you can, instead of turning the air conditioner on or the heat on or whatever, you can open and close flaps on your gear, put on different gear to uh, control warmth. You know, the helmet has all kinds of uh, venting options. Open and close this thing. Same with this. Um, types of glove you wear. I've got, the, these are ventilated gloves. I've got some other gloves in here that are not ventilated. But anyway, great, great day for a ride. You know what I think? I'm going to put this camera, I'm going to go look for, uh, look at my map and see where else there is to go. We have made it back to the Fuzzy Biker Garage, 258 miles on the old hot rod today. Look, the, it's got a new collection of bugs all over it. <laughs> ah, great day for a ride. A friend of mine, just as I pulled up, pulled up in his uh, Ultra Classic and uh, what, a, what a great, he, he and I rode the same roads. We just didn't ride together. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Well, similar roads. Anyway, the Dinky Diner was closed. I said that earlier. Um, I ended up getting a subway a couple towns over, and uh, you know, it wasn't quite as exciting as uh, eating something at the Dinky Diner. So we'll have to get back there again. Dinky Diner, what? D Decatur, Decatur City, Iowa. Uh, you know, I, I got to thinking. I didn't mention what I added. I told you what the bike was, kind of, um, but I didn't tell you what I or what was added to the bike. So Baxter Cycle sold me this bike with a whole bunch of stuff already on it. And what they put on it, Baxter Cycle is uh, in Marnie, Iowa, BaxterCycle.com. They put these uh, wide pegs on it and put this touring seat on it, front and back. They put these racks on. They can't show you those. And then they put these military bags on. And uh, I don't know what else they did. What would that be? Well, that's about four things, right? And uh, that really, you know, the, I would say of all those things, the bags and the seat, actually all, all of it, the bags, the seat, and the uh, pegs are... Uh, key to success in enjoying this bike. I love these pegs because I, I, they're just far more comfortable than the stock ones, at least for my feet. Um, the seat itself is firmer, the touring seat, and I've done, uh, well like today, I did 260 miles. I've done, uh, I think I did 700 some miles or just under, just over 700 in two days on this bike, and uh, it, it's pretty darn comfortable. Pretty darn comfortable. Oh, they put the tire on. It's a Metzler on the back. And that now has, uh, well, I had 70 on it before I got here, and we did uh, 260, so whatever that adds up to, 330. So they added that for me, too. Things I added, I put, uh, let me think here. Oh, I put the cat delete pipe in right there. There's a pipe right here. We took that off, but I put this uh, cat delete pipe in. And then I added these tire pressure, Bobo tire pressure sensors. I believe in those. I have them on all my bikes except my Harley. I, I rarely ride the Harley. And the reason I don't have them on there is I ride it so infrequently that the batteries would probably be dead, you know, if I had a system for that bike. But uh, on my other bikes, I have them on all of On the Himalayan and on the uh, Super Meteor, I've got dash mount units. On this bike and on my Moto Guzzi, I've got, you have to use your smartphone to, to use them. But uh, it uh, is, a, you know, I, I always check, I always check my tire pressure. You know, everything on the bike works through the tires, so that's very important. Anyway, what a great day for a ride, great day for a ride. So well, now what? Uh, I've got a plan for tomorrow, another ride plan for tomorrow. I'm trying to get a bunch of riding in this week. Uh, Thursday, we're gonna go take the Himalayan out to, uh, I think it's Utah. I think it's just across the border from uh, Colorado. So we're gonna head from there. We're gonna do a little bit of Utah, a little bit of Colorado, and then back. So I gotta get the uh, Himalayan ready. I got. You know, I don't know if we're supposed to camp or hotel it. I got to call the guy and find out. But uh, so that's what we're going to work on. We'll do another ride on that maybe. So that should be fun. That should be a good time. Hey, if you all are interested in a uh, newer used Royal Enfield Triumph, classic British bike of any type, need parts, accessories, thing with jigs, doodads like this wonderful coat, maybe a helmet, gloves, <laughs> boots, anything at all, get yourself over to Baxter Cycle in the mighty metropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Or go to BaxterCycle.com. Those guys can help you out. Make sure you tell them Fuzzy Biker, that's me, sent you. <laughs> Life is good. I would tell you that I'm going to hop on a bike and go ride, but I just got back from a nice long ride. So I think what I'm going to do is sit down and relax. Y'all, get out there and ride, my friends. Life is good. Wahoo! Yippee-yay-yay! Yippee-yay-yo! Down the road we go. Beautiful, beautiful machine. <laughs>